This morning I have an opportunity to talk to you about a wonderful retreat that will be taking place on May 18th, brought to us by One World, One Spirit. Each of, and every one of us holds a story in our hearts. These stories are sacred and are meant to be told and listened to. Stories are what connect us, enrich us, support us, and bring our shared humanity to life. In a book on spirituality and aging that I read many years ago, the author encouraged everyone to record their stories of their families so they wouldn't be lost. And that was about the time that I started to jot down little quips and vignettes of things that I remembered throughout my life. In the book, Between Listening and Telling, Mark Iaconelli, the author and our special guest for our half-day retreat, guides us through the ways we can hear and be heard. One reviewer said, A lot of things can be taken from us, our houses, our bank accounts, even our lives. But Iaconelli recognizes that nothing can take away the power of storytelling. I think this is what drew me to Mark's book. I read his book, then I listened to his book. It, I found it shares the compelling opportunity we have to listen to what we hold so dear in our hearts. Mark will be here on Saturday, May 18th, from 9.30 to 2.30. I, for one, am very excited about the opportunity to be a part of this retreat. I want to come and I want to feel free to share my story, or I want to feel free to just simply listen and hear what others have to say, hear Mark's story and hear if others have an opportunity to be able to share their stories. You can sign up today after worship, or you can sign up online. We have a few books that are available to borrow, and Kay will be in the back, um, in the narthex, after the service, if you'd like to borrow one. Hopefully you can read it. It's a pretty quick read, because it grabs you, it grabs me, and you can return it so others can borrow it as well. Uh, and right now, I think we're going to show a brief clip uh, Mark talking about being a story catcher. there was a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Would you play it again and let it go just a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Nina, you have a story worth telling, and you have a story that's actually sacred, that could draw any of us in this room into some um, freeing truth, that could bring us all into grace, or bring us all into a sense of connection. And, and you have that. And I believe that every human being. So if you believe that as a story catcher, then all I need to do is I just need to spend a lot of time with you, you know, and ask you questions and listen and notice where the heat is. It's probably like that when you're working with people writing, right? And, and you're, you're noticing when your heart leaps or you're noticing... Oh, can I give you yeah. an example? Yeah. I'm working in Wales for six months. There was a group that wanted to do, um, wanted to raise money for refugees. There's Calais, France, had 5,000 refugees uh, that were trying to get into the UK. They, and, and the news was calling us the jungle, and there was a lot of violence and stuff. And so these people wanted to tell stories. And there was a woman who had started a thing called Share, and she was raising money and clothes and all this stuff to send over to the refugees. So I met with her, she wanted to tell her story. And for an hour, I'm asking her questions, and she's telling me about the organization, and the principles, and the politics, and I don't care, actually. I'm not that interested in all this stuff. I'm waiting for the story. And um, I said, yeah, but when did, why did you decide to do this? And she said, well, I was on an elliptical, 
I was looking through my social media and I saw a little two-year-old body that washed up on a beach on an island in Greece. I don't know if you remember this. It was a little body that drowned a little boy. And I just stopped and I said, I have to do something about this. So uh, I started this organization. So Mark has uh, lived in Marin one time. He worked at Sleepy Hollow Presbyterian Church. Some folks got to know him then. So it's kind of coming home for him. And uh, we'll see another short clip next week. But I hope that you'll really think about coming to the retreat on Saturday, May 18th, to hear more about his own story, what led him to this interest. And he's worked with communities all over the world after disasters and trauma as well as in churches and in different contexts, to think about how telling our stories and listening uh, can move us into deeper ways of being connected and to be aware of the presence of the Spirit in our lives. So as we join in worship together today, and we think about the ways our stories of the church are woven together over time, with those who are called to serve as elders and deacons, let us be open to that spirit as we sing our opening song. It takes two of us to fill in for one Martha. <laughs> At least two. and hear 
your grace revealed as we worship this day.
our joy today to ordain and install our leaders. I invite Mike Stone forward, our clerk of session. We begin by reading part of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given gifts of the Spirit to be used for the common good. And together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are all called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of Christ who demonstrated servant leadership. Within the Church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as elders, as ruling as ministers of the word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacrament. We are this morning in ordaining and installing a number of our friends, both at the 830 service and now. As I call your name, would you come up and stand uh, facing Cynthia and me, representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of First Presbyterian Church of San Rafael now ordains Gwen Truex to the office of deacon and installs her to active service on the board of deacons. We installed to active service on the Board of Deacons the following who have previously been ordained. Sherry Burns, Dory Crawford, Marsha Deswart, Dinah McClure, Sandy Muirhead, Sue Rostoni, Laurel Stevenson. We installed to active service on the session the following who have previously been ordained. Dan Crawford, Lynn McDermott. I now ask all of you the questions as you reaffirm or or when who is being ordained today. Will you walk fully in the path of Jesus, acknowledge him head of the church, and through him believe in one God whose spirit pervades and whose glory is reflected in all creation? If so, please say, I will. Will you listen for God's word in the ancient testimonies we call scripture and attend to God's present activity in the world? I will. I will. Will you be instructed and led by the confessions of the Reformed faith, which teach us that our faith must not only be reformed, but always reforming as you lead the people of God? I will. I will. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to the love made known in Jesus Christ in Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's Word and Spirit? Will you, in your own life, Seek to follow Jesus, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and fullness of the church? If so, please say, I do. I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? <laughs> This is, question is for those who are being installed as elders. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, 
nurture, and service? Will you share in the government, discipline, serving and governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. And for the deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging, concern, and directing people's help to the friendless and those in need, in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? And now two, con two questions for the congregation. Ways of remem remembering for ourselves and for the newly ordained and installed officers what we expect of them and what they can expect of us. Do we, the members of the church, accept these friends in, in Christ as ruling elders and deacons chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, will you say, we will? We, we will. will. Do you agree to encourage them, to respect their decisions, to follow them as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church? If so, will you say, we will? We, we will. will. In the Presbyterian tradition is the laying on of hands as a way to show that together we uh, are instruments of the Spirit and acknowledge and imbue those who are called by the Spirit to serve. So I now invite all of those who have been ordained as <laughs> pastors, elders, and deacons to please come forward and if those who are here to turn and face me. Okay. If you are um, putting your hand on someone who is being ordained or installed, you can put your hand on someone who is next to you.
today comes from the book of Ephesians, a letter, an epistle written to these early followers of Jesus' way to invite them to know more deeply what it means to be called and live in community. Listen for these words from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 1 and selected verses. I therefore beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one God, one faith, one baptism, one God who is above all, and through all, and in all. The gifts of Christ, the gifts Christ gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into the one who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Holy and gracious one, we hear these ancient words about those who were seeking to follow the ways of Jesus and live in community in a new way, to be koinonia, to be the gathered church with different gifts. Help us to hear these words in our time and place, to reflect on the gifts that we have, to notice the ways we are called in different ways to serve, that the body of the church, the body of this community, might reflect your love and light in all we do. I've been reading Mark Iaconelli's book in anticipation of him coming in a couple weeks, his book on storytelling, between the listening and the telling, how stories can save us. And he invites us to think about the ways that we might tell our own stories, how we might frame our stories. We can tell our stories chronologically, about our life. We could think of different themes or interests or things that have been important to us and how narratives can change depending on when we're telling our stories or who's listening. And he talks a lot about his own experience of learning to tell some very hard stories about his own life. <clears throat> and when he felt safe enough to tell them, and when he didn't. And how it felt that people who listened were really listening, and how that experience changed him. I like the different ways he helps us kind of imagine how we tell our own stories, what that image, what that metaphor could look like. And here are a couple quotes from early on in the book. He says, within 
the soul are sacred paintings, captured memories that hold the emotional truths at the root of our being. 